I say it's still our month of grace. Um, and I was going to tell a story. What I want to speak to us about today is, for there is hope. For there is what? There is hope. There is hope. You know, about 30 years ago, my dad had a tenant back in Nigeria, West Africa, and um, this tenant was, he was a good man, to be honest, but a, a drunkard. A banker. In those days, when you are a banker, people look up to you as if you really have the money, the whole money in your pockets. But this man always will come from work. I will be drinking from in a joint, very close to our house then. But the wife persevered. The woman, of course, she was already a difference in the Redeemed Christian Church of God in those days. But she persevered. The man will drink to the, to the extent that... <laughs> When he knocks on the door and the whole, the whole, I mean, the whole streets, you just wake up every night. But our seven and our children, they persevered. To be honest with you, in those days, I look at the problem as if that was their hand, to be honest. But one day, one day, the woman told her story and said, the man, already drunk, came home and it was time for the family prayer. And obviously, you know this man will never join them in the prayer. And, the, the, and this is a house. That is why I say to people that give your children the opportunity to pray. They can pray. Our children, when they are finished praying, it is okay. Don't, don't, don't do prayer or, or, over prayer. They are praying. They said this five-year-old boy, I mean, the boy should be about 35 years now. The boy was praying, God, please deliver daddy. Bring daddy back. Deliver our daddy. And the man was here. And they, they said the man busted into, yeah, into tears. He was really crying to say, this is my five-year-old boy. Even knows that I'm not, I'm not saying. And God delivered him. The Lord Almighty will deliver us this morning. He will save every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. For there is hope. Let's open our Bible quickly to the book of Job chapter 14. 7 to 9, the book of Job, chapter 14. Book of Job, chapter 14. I'll read 7 to 9. Job, chapter 14. Seven to nine says, For there is hope for a tree, if it is cut down, that it will sprout again. And that his tender shoots will not cease, though his roots may grow old in the heart, and his thorn may die in the ground. Yet, at the scent, he said, at the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. There is hope for a tree. There is hope for you in the name of Jesus. No matter what that situation is, no matter what that that circumstance is, there is hope for you. I want you to tell yourself that there is hope for me because there is indeed hope for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I said there is indeed hope for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever you have got lost, the Holy Ghost will locate you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever the situation may be, Almighty God Himself will touch you in the name of Jesus. For there is hope for a tree. When the enemy starts, the end has come. At the saints of prayer, at the saints of our belief, at the saints of perseverance, at the sense of praise and righteous living, at the sense of patiently waiting on the Lord, help will be made available unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to know that this life can beat anyone down with trials. You do, there's no qualification of who, who this life can beat down. If you can beat Buhari down, you can beat anybody down as well. I mean, everyone we have our own portion, no matter how big, no matter how small. But one thing I normally tell people is that if you think your own, is bigger than anybody else. It's because there has not, not been meeting of people to, I mean, have a, have a meeting of people that are going through issues. You will know that's God. I thank you. I thank you. This life can do anything. The Bible says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. It says, the thoughts of peace are not of evil. To give you what? Mm -hmm. To give us a hope and a future. May we have a hope in Christ in the name of Jesus. I want us to open to Psalm 3 where we prayed with, what we, the verse we prayed with this morning. Psalm 3, 2 to 8. The book of Psalm 3. 
the book of Psalm 3. And it's 2 to 8. The Bible says, Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. How can anybody say that? Has God sat down with them? Has he had any meeting with them? To say this is the end of somebody? The Bible says, But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. May the Lord lift up your head in every area in the name of Jesus. Where the head is shaking, just like my sister said this morning. If there's anywhere our head is shaking this morning, the Almighty God will straighten it and will lift it up in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I awoke for the Lord sustained me. May the Lord sustain us this morning, even as a church after four years in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in verse 6, I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O God, save me, O my God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. May the blessing be upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. My brethren, I want to let us know that God is working things out for you. And there is hope for you in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. There is hope for this church, RCCD, Fruto Tabernacle, Canvey Island, in the mighty name of Jesus. But you have responsibility to, towards the hope of God. People that are expectant, people that are expecting the hope to say, and ah, there will be a turn around for me. You can't just sit down and just wait. I mean, we have all heard of this story that Gio told us that two people, one, they went to the, the Juju people. I don't know what they call them now. So they, they told them that you, you are going to be king. Nobody can, no, no, nobody can mess about with you. You are going to be the future king. And you, you are going to be servant of the king. And uh, the man of God told us that the one that was meant to be the servant was angry. We were just angry to say, ah, how can I be, there are two brothers. How can I be a servant? How can I be serving him? He said from that place, he made up his mind that I'm not going to be a servant. And he put up all efforts. They said he would go to his farm and work. He would do this and work. Then, then there was a breakout of what in the, in the community of farming. And they now came to him to buy. So he turned into what? A very rich person. They made him a king. What about the one that was, was pronounced a king? He now sat down and was expecting to say, the man said that nobody will, uh, uh, no shaking. They said the man said that. That's no, mm, you are going to be the king. Then he became the servant of that one. That would not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Whatever God has spoken into your life, whatever God has promised you, you have a responsibility towards it. You are supposed to walk towards it. Can God Almighty help in us when we achieve it in the mighty name of Jesus? Mm -hmm. You have a responsibility towards hope. You must be able to cry. The Bible says in verse 3, let's look at verse 3. Verse 3 says, But you, O Lord, are my shield, are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. Look at verse 6. <coughs> no, verse 4 says, I cry to the Lord with my voice. You have a responsibility. You must be able to cry to God. You must be able to pray to God. You have a responsibility to talk to God. The Bible says, What? It is equally your responsibility not to be afraid. Look at what verse told us, I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people. Why will I not be afraid of 10,000 of people? Because the Bible makes me to understand that surely they will gather. He did not say they will not gather. He said surely they will gather. He said, but not by me. I don't know anything about their gathering. But he says what? They will fall for your sake. And that shall be it in the mighty name of Jesus. So you have a responsibility not to be afraid of people. Because the, the psalmists are said to us, he will not be afraid even when fear comes. Fear will always come. There are things that can torment us. There are situations that can come that we did say, God, are you still there? How come you, you did not stop this? You did not stop it? Because we have a responsibility towards it. And God will give us understanding in the name of, in the name of Jesus. The book of Luke, don't forget what we are talking about. For there is hope. For there is hope. Luke chapter 18. The book of Luke chapter 18. I will read 35 from 35. Luke 18 from 35. The Bible says, Then it happened, as he was coming near Jericho, Jesus was coming near Jericho, that a certain blind man sat by the road, roadside begging, and hearing a multitude passing by, he asked them what it meant. Because he was blind, he could not see. 
Verse 37 says, so, so they told him that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was passing by. And he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those who went before warned him that he should, he should be quiet. But he cried the more. That is your responsibility. The Bible recorded that this man cried the more. Even people were shutting him up. I, I, that day could have made up his mind and said, even if they are going to kill me, my position is not, what I'm experiencing now is even, it's, it's like death. Let them kill me if they want to kill me. He exercised his responsibilities. The Bible recorded that he cried out all the more, louder probably, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still. Concerning your situation this morning, God, we stood, we stand still. Amen. Jesus, we stand still. The Bible, the Bible recorded that he commanded him to be brought to him. And whom he had, he had come near, he asked him this question. Look at another responsibility, saying, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. This man had been in that position, the Bible did not tell us, for so long. He was blind, but he could hear. But people who are blind can say, I don't care. We, we, we are blind this morning about careless Christians. There are careless people as well. People who don't care. At least I'm already blind. What is left to be done? But these days, we see people who are lame. People who have, who have no hands. And they can still write with their legs. I saw somebody writing with their... I don't know if, if you see that, that WhatsApp. Somebody writing with his, with their legs. Yes. Mm -hmm. Somebody with no arm and you know, with no legs backing a child and singing in the church. Mm -hmm. And you be thinking, things are happening. People who don't... I mean, those days, if you don't have arm, if you don't have legs, it will look as if the end has come. But these days, they are even using it to make money now. Because people don't have... They are not celebrities everywhere. God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus only stood still when this man persisted in his cry. So that, that teaches us that when you are persistent in your cry unto God, the Bible says we should ask until our joy is full. If you are asking continuously, then it will stand still for you in the name of Jesus. Are you tired of crying and talking to God? Please cry the more. And it will stand still for you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in verse 41, it said, The man said that I may receive my sight. Many of us don't know what we want. We don't know our responsibility. It is your responsibility to know what you want. If you remember the lame man by the pool of Bethsaida, who remember? The man that was lame for how many years? 38 years. The Bible recorded that Jesus saw him and said, what do you want me to do for you? How many people can remember what he said? He said there was nobody to put me in the water. He lost his responsibility. But the Bible recorded that despite that, God did what? He answered him. You must know because at any point in time, God can ask you, what do you want me to do for you? You don't want to be saying A when you are supposed to be saying B. The man lost his responsibility. He did not know what to say. He said that. He was going to explain that every year, people run to the water. They don't, but no, there was nobody to help me to get to the water. Mm -mm. That was not the question Jesus Christ asked him. What do you want me to do for you? This blind man knew his He said that I may receive my sight. That I may receive my sight. They told me of the story of a lady in a, I mean, lady, a lady going to 40 years old in a, in a house fellowship, and they said, and they have been praying for this lady, they have been praying for her. And one day, the Holy Spirit said to the leader, Can you ask the lady if she's expecting, as expectant, if she wants to get married? And they now ask the, for the person they have been asked, praying for, and say, What is your heart? Is that? What do you, he said, I don't know. She said, I don't know what I, I want. So, what is your prayer request? I don't know. Somebody that is going to 40 years old. That, I mean, your prayer request is to be God. Please, give, give me a man. The bone of my bone. So, so many people have lost their responsibilities. If you don't know what you want God to do for you, what can God do then? If you cannot tell God what you want him to do, the Almighty God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Don't be like the lame man. It is your responsibility to know what you want God to do for you. What are your plans, brethren? Do you think nothing can be done on that situation? No. Many things can still be done. Please, if you have a NIV, I want you to read Zechariah 4 7 for me, please. The book of Zechariah 4 7. Zechariah 4 7, if you are there, please read to me. Yes. 4 7, darling. Thank you. NIV. NIV. Thank you. Are you there? 
Yeah. What are what are you? Mighty mountain. Before Zerubbabel, mm -hmm. Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. God bless you. Stand. That's the one. Whatever the situation may be, may be, it will become what another version says plain. It will become level ground. Whatever it is, God will make every crooked way straight for you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, "Who oh, are thou, mountain, before Zerubbabel?" It says, "You shall become." A plain NIV says you will become a level ground, and it shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of what grace, grace to all. NIV says, God bless it, God bless it, isn't it? God will help us in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. All we have responsibility towards is that we must believe and we must have hope. So many people they believe but they don't have the hope. They believe, oh yes, yeah, uh, but they are not expectant, they are not full of expectation, they are not expecting that it will come to pass. Whatever the situation may be this morning, God Almighty will send help to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The book of Matthew 17, 20 to 21. Matthew 17, 20 to 21. The Bible says, So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, I don't know how many people have seen mustard seed before. Ma, have you seen mustard seed before, ma? I used to have it at uh, home. It's, it's too tiny. Mustard seed. It's like like creamish color like this or brownish color. Tiny. The Bible says what? If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. I declare this morning that nothing shall be impossible for you in the name of Jesus. If you have faith that is as little, it's as small as mustard seed, the Bible says you will say something, you will declare to something today to go, and that thing will go. You will command something to come for you, and it will come to you in the name of Jesus. That whatever you bound on her shall, whatever you bind on her shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you, you set loose on her shall be set loose on, on, in heaven for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to let us know that our hearts must not be sick. Our hearts must not be sick, no matter what the situation may be. Because when our desires come, when our dreams is fulfilled, it is like a tree of life. Four. Delay is not a denial. If we are waiting on something, it may be painful. Just expect that it will come to pass for you. Because I believe that the Egyptians we see today, we see them no more. In the mighty name of Jesus. From now on, you will not look for your enemies, you will look for your tormentors. The Bible says you will not find them forevermore. In the name of Jesus. There, there are some issues that will look like they will not they will be with us forever. It's a lie. It is a lie. I want us to tell our neighbor, just tell somebody in front of you that there is hope for me in Jesus Christ. Because I want to, we had a testimony today. It's only in Christ that we have hope. It is only in God that we have hope. It is your responsibility to hope in the Lord. Those who hope in the Lord, we do what? They always renew their strength. Those people who believe in God, they always swear on wings like eagles. They always run and they don't grow weary. They walk and they don't, they don't go faint. It is your responsibility to see a turn around in your situation. Because God has given us a blank check to always ask until our joy is full. So it is your responsibility to ask. It is also your responsibility to encourage your family. It is your responsibility to look, responsibility to look forward to changes that God has promised you and your household. It is equally your responsibility to believe that, believe all that God has said. Because God will always speak. And I say to people that God speaks to every one of us. It's only that the way he speaks to you is different from the way he speaks to me. For some people, until they open their Bible, God will not speak anything. For some people, until they do some, some people, they will just be washing plates in the kitchen. And God is telling them things. But some people, they will need extra quiet room until God can speak to them. It's, it doesn't make you better than anybody. It's only that the way God speaks to us, the way God can catch our attention, is different from one another. It doesn't make us more, more holy than anybody. No. The way he can speak to you. Probably, Sabala, when she, some, you know some people, man, at the university, when they want to read, they put on music. 
and they are, I don't know how they do it, to be honest. They will be studying. But in that, in that case, some people can be putting on music and God can be speaking to them. And they can be hearing. But some people will need extra dead room for, for God to speak and for them to hear. It doesn't make anyone better than another. What is important is that God is speaking to every one of us at his own pace. Psalm 31 verse 24. That one tells us to be strong and take heart. Let's see Psalms 31. Psalms 31 verse 24 says, Psalms 31 verse 24 says, Be of good courage and it shall strengthen your hearts. All you hope in the Lord, only those people that hope in the Lord will be encouraged and will be strengthened in us. May our hearts be strengthened in the mighty name of Jesus. This, this proverb is one of the proverbs I love most. I love most because it's so straight, straight to the points. It's so, so straight. Proverbs 24 verse 10 says, the book of Proverbs 24 verse 10, it says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. If you do what? If you become discouraged in the day when things are happening to you, it means that the strength, your strength is small. It means that the level that you are with Christ is not where you are supposed to be. There are, because there will, be, there will always be issues. But the Bible now says, in those days, if you now faint, if you backslide because of that, if you run after scatter because of that, then your strength is small. May our strength not be small in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not fail in, your, in all your responsibilities in the mighty name of Jesus. God knows everything about you. Nothing happens without his knowledge. Nothing happens without him. Nothing comes and is strange in, into him. And I want us to trust the God the more in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever it is that we are going through, let's believe that God can do it. Let's believe that God is still doing it. A, a friend of mine told me a story when I was talking to, to, to her and she said, her, <laughs> what are you saying? That my friend is, let me not, because she's very close, so let me just say where she is. She said, when I, I went to her church, she said, Pastor oh, Fulu, there was a day I was the only one in the church. And he said, the cat can only come to open the door. And when she got there, she was, he was greeting her. And he started coming to the room to say, ah, he's the pastor's wife, she's the only one there in the church. Because the other husband went somewhere, the children went with the husband. So they were expecting the church, normal church will come. So it was holy really, She said she sang. She finished singing. And um, nobody came. And she said that she started the word. She finished the word. And the caretaker now came to say, Ma, is everything okay? Because, she, because, ah, because the, the guy, I think the guy was scared to say, ah, and as if there is nobody in the church, you can just pack your bag and go. Why will you go to the set of singing and now the word? She said, the pastor says she, 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 I mean, she already prepared her word anyway. She, she said her own and she went home, they locked the door. She said, what, what would she have done? And I look and say, God, you are faithful. Because that is faithfulness in Christ. That is not, I mean, she used it as a testimony to me. And if you want to see that church today, they want to, they are just, I don't know how many, I went to preach one day and it started there, there, about a month ago. God has been faithful to them. Let me tell you something, God sees our heart. Sometimes he tests us with little. He tests us with little. I don't know, I was talking to Brother Bimbo, I said, what the man, the man that came to preach said to us, he said, he planted 15 churches and five, uh, seven of the churches disappeared. They can't find a pastor. Is it not where you find pastor, you find the church? The man said, you cannot find a pastor, seven pastors, talk less of ten, seven churches, to, say, to even ask, where is the church now? At least we, are, we planted you. So where is the church now? The man said, they vanished into thin hair. Anytime, this man preached this about three years ago in fruitful land. Anytime I remember that talk, it's something I can never forget. To say, God, it doesn't matter the number we are, you are faithful. And you will continue to be faithful to us. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to bow down our heads. I want us to pray to the Almighty God. I want us to tell the Almighty God today that God, please help me. We are going to the month of help. 
Next month is our month of help. But I want us to cry to God. Please locate me, Daddy. You are the only one who can do it. There's nothing impossible for you to do. You have done it before, and you can still do it. Lord, please help us as a church. Help us in our homes. Help our family. Help our children. Help our home. In the mighty name of Jesus, we're going to tell God, God, you can do it. Daddy, you can do it. have done more before. Oh, if you can put up gigantic churches like that, and they are fulfilling purpose, give us the grace to fulfill purpose, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want us to pray for our children. I want us to pray for all our grandchildren that help will be sent unto them. They will not miss it in the name of Jesus. God will do a new thing in their life. He will do a new thing for them in the name of Jesus. I want us to pray that, Lord, by next year, when we look ba back to four years, it will be like we are 20 years of what God will have done for us. Let's pray that, my Lord and my God, our ah, Heavenly Father, by next year when we'll be celebrating five, no, 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 it will not be like this. It will be to your glory. It will be to, to glorify your name because there will have been enlargement and expansion and about us in the mighty name of Jesus. The church will not just be enlarged. Every family will have been enlarged. Our jobs, our homes, our lives will have been added unto in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, the most powerful God. All glory be unto you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Daddy, for your word. Thank you because you have done it. Thank you for what you will yet do. Thank you for all our askings this morning. To the glory of your name. At the end of it all, my prayer is that none of us shall miss heaven. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Before we share the